By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a revised battle between white and black. That's the deck that I'm playing with against a mono blue deck. And they're both completely revised builds because we have a revised only tournament coming up. So we're practicing a little bit. And here you see me playing my swamp next to my planes, attacking with the Savannah line and bringing my opponent Wouter to 18 life. And he's playing a Lord of Atlantis. Maybe the best two drop in the format because it's a 2 2, but it also has the ability to pump other merfolks, including the other Lords of Atlantis, giving them plus one, plus one, and Island Walk. So I'm sure that um, Wouter's playing with some merfolk of the Pearl Trident then and some uh, Phantasmal Terrains here. So curious if he can find them in his deck. Uh, for now, I've just played a Royal Assassin, the famous 1 uh, 1 killer of black so I can tap it to kill a tapped creature right now I cannot because it still has summoning sickness and there's that third island from Wouter and there is a tap let's see what he's going to do there's another Lord of Atlantis and this is exactly what I talked about earlier this is why I think it's such a good two drop because they're pumping each other right now. So he has two, three, three creatures. Luckily for me, I have that Royal Assassin to protect me. And there's a Hypnotic Spectre, and that's bad news for Wouter, because now I can hit him through the air. Um, and, and then he has to start discarding uh, cards from his hand. So, of course, that's something he doesn't want. He's playing with blue, so it's going to be hard to remove creatures here. The best scenario is playing a Control Magic, if he can find a fourth mana. And he's playing a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, so I guess he can't. And that means that I can go to Value Town. So I'm going to hit him here for two. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that he has to discard a card. So he's showing me his hand. And he has to discard the Jadem Tome. Not really an important card at this point in the game. But it's always a good th uh, feeling to swing in with a Hippie. And personally, I really, really don't like playing against Hypnotic Spectres. Um, when I build decks, I actually keep that in the back of my mind because you see a lot of mono black in old school builds. And of course, they all play with the Hypnotic Spectre. It's just such a good creature. And here I go for another hit. So Wouter's down to 12. And again, he has to discard a card. And this time he loses a Rocket Launcher. Ooh, and that's more serious because if he could find a land next turn and play the rocket launcher he could okay potentially kill my hypnotic specter but here's another hypnotic specter wow and i must say i do like the choice to play with the rocket launcher in mono blue because it at least gives you some removal options um it's it's not great but look, look at creatures like the royal assassin the, the savannah lion etc you can now just um kill them pretty easily with the rocket launcher but the rocket launcher is gone and this is an interesting uh, situation here because uh, Wouter is playing a control magic over my royal assassin and now he's attacking full swing with a lord of atlantis and a merfolk of the pearl trident and i decide to double block the lord of atlantis not sure if i would have attacked with the lord on the other hand you have to to do something because i have those two hippies oh and there's a disenchant and this i think this is pretty much the game i mean this is the nail in the coffin that disenchant um, because at least with the Royals, he could have killed my, um, oh, and he's showing his cards now. Uh, he, he could have, oh, he has to, of course, because he's discarded those two cards. But uh, what I wanted to say is with the Royal Assassin, he could at least have killed one of the hippies and his next turn kill the other. Uh, and there's, okay, there's a Brain Geyser. So there's something, Wouter's doing something back here, drawing four new cards. But off, but of course, he's going to lose two of those cards and now he's playing an island three cards in hand mean, meaning he can only keep one card unless he has an unsummon for instance to to send back one of the hippies um and there's a double attack and, and that's that's just so deadly when you're playing against let me call them active hippies because there's yeah even with the brain geyser there's no way of coming back and i really think the the, the decisive moment in this game was that disenchant on the control magic 
I mean, I cannot see him now coming back. He can maybe play a Mahamoti Jin. Um, but no, it's not going to happen. And this is a win, a pretty, pretty quick win. Pretty good draw for me uh, with my uh, white-black deck. It's kind of like, like a tap deck, uh, tap discard deck that I've built. Uh, so this was the first game. So curious to see what's going to happen in game number two after sideboarding. And, um, and we can see what the blue deck uh, can do against this, uh, this aggression. Game number two is going to start. And it's mono blue on the play after losing that first game. Let's see what's going to happen. I wonder what, um, what you can really board in when you're playing Revised Blue against a white-black deck against a Dead Guy Ill kind of build. Um, I'm starting here with a Savannah playing a Savannah Lions. How cool is that? I'm on theme here. And I'm swinging in with two. He's 218 playing a Swamp passing turn. At least there's not a hippie turn one. Ah, and there's the Surrender Afrit. We haven't seen him in the first game. And that's a 3-4 flyer. And it's such a powerhouse. But I have the Royal Assassin. I think I play with three Royal Assassins in this deck quite a lot. And I, I have some tricks as well. Maybe I can... Ooh, there is a Control Magic. Nice. Very nice. I wonder with how many he plays main. I would definitely say board in all the control magics you have against my deck and there is a disenchant so i'm getting that one back and that means that the royal assassin is going to protect me again from those big creature threats four mana tap oh great this is excellent there's the rocket launcher and rocket launcher is a card originally comes from the antiquity series and you can pay two to deal one damage to any target. And here you see me using a, a combo here. I play a Paralyze on the Afrit, then it taps the creature, and I can activate my Royal Assassin to kill the Surrender Afrit, swinging in with two damage here with the Savannah Alliance, playing a Black Knight. So I'm really filling up the board. I want to... Um, I want to make it difficult for my opponent to choose what to remove with the rocket launcher because as I was saying the rocket launcher is an artifact that says pay two it deals one damage and you can do this that as as many times as you want but at the end of the turn that you've activated the rocket launcher the rocket launcher leaves play and and on the picture you kind of see an orc with the bazooka it's it's a very cool very flavorful card um and there Wouter plays another uh, surrender Perfreed. So he's really drawing those surrender Perfreeds this turn, and that's that's going to protect him. It's a, it's a great blocker here. So at least he's safe, and maybe he can then kind of slowly work out, uh, build out his manas, and and then just try to kill as many creatures as he can with the huge uh, rock launcher. That's kind of the tactic that I would use now. It is a little bit dangerous because I do play with disenchant. So what if I would draw into a disenchant right now? I could just remove the rocket launcher from the game and he wouldn't have any mana to uh, respond to this action. There's a Swords to Plows here, so removing the Surrender Pafrit. So Wouter's gaining three life, but I'm able to swing in with my entire army. So he's losing more life and taking five damage and there's a Hypnotic Spectre. Oh, and this is a problem here for Wouter because what to do? And he's not drawing any land. So that's bad luck here because he needs to land what is he going to do? And he's playing a double Lord of Atlantis. I'm not sure if, if I would have done that in this case. On the other hand, he now has blockers for the ground. And he's going to lose a card because of the hippie. But at least he doesn't take a lot of damage. Because the lords pump each other, like I said in the first game. So he's two, three, three creatures now, which is quite nice. And there's that disenchant that I talked about. And that's the danger... By not playing it out and not using it. Um, it does have to be in play, by the way, a whole turn, the rocket launcher. You cannot, um, uh, you cannot use it straight away. But th this is the danger. Because if he would have had uh, mana left in response to my disenchant, he could have said, okay, I'm going to sacrifice my rocket launcher. And at least remove your royal assassin in Savannah line from the game. Or, or, of course, the Hypnotic Spectre. I think I would have, would have done the Hypnotic Spectre, actually, to be honest. Um, 
But hey, it's a difficult choice because you have to protect your life total uh, as well. Because uh, that's going downhill very rapidly. And there's a Mahamulti Jin right on time. That's a 5-6 powerhouse. And that will be able to block that Hypnotic Spectre. He's still on 6 life. He's not dead. And as long as you're not dead, you're still in the game. It's as simple as that. And what I'm doing is I'm just expanding my board. I know I'm playing Mono Blue, so I'm not afraid for a Wrath of God effect. Because it's not in Mono Blue Revised. So I can just I can just play out all my creatures. Um, there is a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident being a 3-3 three, three now. Um, so there, we're kind of in a standstill at the moment. Because if Wouter attacks, I can just kill his creature with my Royal Assassin. He's also on 6. If I attack, it's not favorable for me at this time. But what I'm doing now, I'm calculating in my head how many creatures do I need to kill him. Oh, there is a, this is really nice. There's a Control magic on my royal assassin and this can kind of change the game and and this is interesting um we were having a little a little talk because uh, my opponent said i want to attack with my lords of atlantis i said well you know are you are you sure that's a good choice because i have first strike blockers and with first strikers people often think about the offensive capability of a first strike creature but actually they're much better in defense because you can double block and actually triple block. So I have a black knight and two white knights. I can choose to triple block and deal six first strike damage. So again, um, it's not very favorable to attack here. Because you, you cannot trade. You just lose a creature. And I've actually learned this the hard way when I was playing against some mono black decks. And I was playing with the Suchi, a very popular uh, card in, in old school. And I was just constantly facing two black knights. And that meant that my Suchi, I could only use it for blocking purposes. And when you play against a deck with, um, uh, with some tricks with Underworld Dreams, for instance, you're not happy to give them the time to draw into that mechanic. But okay, let's, uh, let's have a look. Let's uh, have a look at the game again. And, and look, I have now four knights. I have a whole army of knights, a Spectre and Alliance. And my opponent has two Lord of Atlantises, a Mahamoti Jin, a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, and of course, the Stolen Royal Assassin. So we're kind of in a standstill here, but he's only on six life. If I would swing in now, he could destroy one of the creatures instantly with the royal. He could block. Okay, I'm playing another lines. I think I'm slowly getting there. I think if I attack next turn, I'm not sure yet. Because remember, he still has that royal, so he can remove one of my creatures. I have six left. He can block with four. No, I'm not going to make it yet <laughs> this is interesting i am playing uh i'm playing an armageddon followed by a savannah I'm, I'm sure i have something in my hand here but i just want to make sure that my opponent cannot play out like cards like another maomoti jin or a, or a big brain geyser because that can get him back in the game and that's what i don't want to to happen here and my deck is, is full of like small creatures, so I don't need a lot of mana. I also have Dark Ritual, as you can see here, and I'm playing a Mind Twist, and he loses his last two cards. And you see him there losing in Mahamoti Jin, and that's exactly why I played that Armageddon. I don't want to see more Mahamoti Jins on the board, because that could start uh, becoming a real problem. If he has two, he can attack with one and keep one for blocking purposes. Um, so we're discussing kind of now the blocking situation here. Playing another plane, putting the savannah in the middle makes sense. And we're just waiting. And I guess my opponent here is, is thinking, what can I do? Do I still have outs? I'm sure he does. What would be really nice for him is to draw a phantasmal terrain and give my creature, make one of my lands into an island. And then see if he can pump his merfolk. Oh, and this is a little problem. There are two royal assassins now facing each other. So the one controlled by Wouter and the one I just played, who still has summoning sickness. Don't think it changes a lot about the actual state of the game. I mean, it's more of a uh, defensive card, the royal assassin. But look at how many lands we already have. I mean, that Armageddon wasn't that long ago, and we already have four lands each. And there's another Murphic of the Pearl Trident. And now it's starting to become tricky for me, because what if he, he's able to play a couple of Unstables, 
uh, phantasmal terrain and just swing in because those those merfolk are, are pretty huge there's two three three merfolk of the pearl tridents two three three lords so that's 12 damage alone uh, and i'm on 17 here let's see what am i going to do i'm tapping something here and what am I, i'm playing a swords and what am i going to take away i think it's yeah i'm taking away my own royal so he's going to seven um and i, I guess i should not just swing in with everything right okay i don't do it yet that's interesting because i think if i he has five blockers oh there's another lord oh my <laughs> oh if he if he draws that phantasmal i'm toast and i think if i attack with everything now i haven't won playing another lines I think I had a window there. I'm not sure. I mean, let me know in the comments what you think. If I think I should have attacked there, it went a little bit, little fast here. Um, he's playing a tome, not really relevant at this point. And I'm playing another arm again and making sure that he cannot activate his tome. Playing a land, playing another royal assassin here. So my hand is empty. And passing turn again. So my, my whole idea with these Armageddons in the deck is I don't need a lot of mana, and I know that my opponent has benefits more from, from mana than I do. And I don't want him to activate his Tome. And again, we're kind of in a standstill. He has six blockers. Uh, I don't think I can, I can hit him for seven. And I have to, because if, if I'm going to attack full force, I'll be open, and, and he can kill me next turn. And there's another Savannah line. I've got a play set of Savannah lines on the board. This is, this is ridiculous. I think I have enough. Now I'm counting here. I think I have enough to kill him. And, and yeah, and there I go. I'm attacking with everything. Let's see what's going to happen. Wow. Even with just with the Royals. So he kills the Hippie, obviously, with the Mahamoti. And... Yeah, he can kill all the knights, but then still, <coughs> ah, sorry, then still there is enough, um, there are enough creatures left on the board here to kill me, even if he decides to just kill the um, royal assassins. I think actually I should lose an, uh, another creature extra, it doesn't really matter, I still have 8 or 7 damage on the board. So I've won this one, but man, what a game, and there's the phantasmal terrain, so it was coming in a few turns. Oh my goodness, and he's showing what he could have done if that Phantasmal Terrain would have come earlier. He would have just won the game. Uh, it's crazy. It's really crazy. As I said in the first game, I really like Lord of Atlantis. I think it's a very strong creature. And just that classic combo of Phantasmal Terrain, Lord of Atlantis, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. It, it, it's, it's really interesting. It's what I like about revised these very old school simple combos that kind of you know take me back to when I started to... Uh, playing magic and kind of understanding that you can combine certain cards together and that they're much more powerful than when you play with them uh, alone in a deck. So thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. <laughs>